Welcome to intense gameplay of Pokemon Emerald, one of Pokemon's more challenging titles and a really interesting one to beat with only fire types for a variety of reasons. It's no secret that every gym in this game is genuinely thought provoking and tough, but trying to beat this game without a type that's advantageous to water is painful. I mean, look at the map. It's like 50% water. The eighth gym leader is monstrous and the champion is a hydro pumping disaster. The game opens up with us taking Torchic to save the day as Oak gets attacked by a rabid raccoon. It's a little embarrassing he's losing this fight, but we had the old man's back. From here, Torchic would be our partner for life. The apple to my pie, the straw to my berry, the James Harden to my giving up? Wait, Torchic seems like it should be good as a Pokemon, right? I mean, firefighting types are typically really strong offensive beasts, and this guy gets speed boost, so we're cooking. Wrong. Gen 3 Vanilla Blaziken is ass. 120 base attack, right? And Blaze Kick at level 36. Unrelated. All fire moves are special. Only Fighting Stab would get categorized under the 120 base attack. Sorry, I misspoke. Fighting move. What? Singular. Kombosuke gets Double Kick at level 16, and Blaziken doesn't get Sky Uppercut until level 59. The Elite 4 level cap for our Nuzlocke is 55. Sweet. 30 base power, two hits, double kick is really the best we can get. Okay. And forget about speed boost. That's not a thing until hidden abilities in generation five. 80 base speed was respectable in gen three, but nothing special. Well, wacko, there have to be other viable fire types in Emerald, right? Wrong. Magcargo, Camerupt, and Torkoal are the three fire musketeers of Emerald. Incredibly slow with super unviable learn sets. Ninetales is the only relatively respectable mon outside of Blaziken, but unavailable until six gyms in and with a very limited move pool itself. The only other fire type was a Pokemon I wasn't even sure about including in the run, Cast Form. I kind of needed it because it was the only Ice Beamer I had access to and it learned Sunny Day without the TM, which meant I would have two Sunny Dayers on the team. I made up some rules if I was gonna use it. One, Cast Form could only attack in its sunny form. Using it in any other form would be illegal. And if Cast Form was out on the field without sun, it had only two options as to what to do next. Use Sunny Day or pivot out. This gave us six Pokemon to use throughout the run, and it was gonna be hilarious. My rule set was standard. Pause the video if you want to see it. Now, Torchic claps everything up to Roxanne. I guess it's not hard, but we have to give the chicken love where we can because Roxanne was about to give the little guy the business. She's got three rock types. They all have rock tomb and they're all evil. Attempt one was nice. We got pulverized. We needed rock tomb misses and ember burns to even have a hint of a chance. Attempt four didn't go super well either. Neither did attempt 12. Ask me about 15. It wasn't until try 16 that we finally saw things start to swing in our favor. Because the AI only sees Rock Tomb as a speed dropping move unless it kills, the Burn Nose Pass was inclined to use the far less damaging Tackle instead. Weird gimmick, but important information in the context of trying to get the Fire Chicken through the Rock Gym by itself. God, I we better not lose a single time from here on out because I'm not sure we'll ever beat Roxanne again. Oh, and I'm not sure if anyone noticed, but we actually leveled up to level 17 here. Why is that interesting? Because Kombuskin learns double kick at level 16, and we didn't get it. Sweet! Who needs fighting type moves? Bruce Lee would still be a good fighter without legs if he could breathe fire. And our favorite rooster was packing that secret blend of herbs and spices. Stogged carried us through an awkward grunt in the tunnel as we pocketed the coveted new Pokenav and headed south to Duford in Grandpa's boat. Steven was in a tunnel, acting suspicious, but looking handsome. He told us not to worry about it, so I didn't. It was Brawly time. Now, with the wrong team options here, Brawly can be a run-ender. Double kick would have been nice to have right now, but instead I was stuck with Peck and Ember. Brawly opens using a Guts Machop with Bulk Up. Burning that thing with Ember could be a devastating blow to my plans. Metatite is a free kill with whatever move I want as it only knows Focus Punch as an attack, which can only do damage if I don't hit it. I just hoped it didn't set up any screens. The final Pokemon was Makuhita at level 19, whose thick fat meant I was likely gonna have to unironically use Peck. But hey, Machop never lives an Ember crit and Metatite set up a reflect before succumbing to an Ember itself. 
Makuhito was out on the field and I was nervous. Big Fat really trivialized Ember, still with Reflect Up and the 10% chance of burning the Chunky Boy, I tried it a couple of times. I got a crit, which proc the Citrus Berry and brought Maku back to full HP. Two more Embers had Maku below half health, but Combuskin was in serious trouble. Back against the wall, a vital throw threatening to kill our 16th attempt, I ordered Stonk to fire off a peck. This was a huge moment for us in the run as the leader tossed us the critical TM bulk up. Stonks were rising. With a new level cap of 24, we were moving on to Slateport City. Team Aqua was bullying a scientist in the museum and it was my job to send them back to Atlantis. Fortunately, they only had Carvanas and Zubats to throw at me, which meant Mr. Science Guy could continue his submarine research. The next major battle was the Route 110 rival battle and May has a marsh top now. The good news, the opening Lombre didn't have a single water move. Even Bubble could have punished us, but with a set that only included Astonish, Absorb, Nature Power, and Growl, Stonk was able to bulk up to Giannis size before obliterating the opposition with his huge pecs. In Mauville, life got infinitely better. After stopping into the Slateport Mart, I was able to exchange my Harbor Mail for a coin case. This coin case then allowed me to gamble in the casino until I had a gajillion coins. And with my gajillion coins that I absolutely took the time to farm without cheating, we got access to unlimited flamethrowers, ice beams, thunderbolts, double teams, and psychics. In with flamethrower, out with ember. And this is real, we officially had our best fighting stab move for a significant portion of the run. 20 base power, rock smash. From the rock smash guy himself. Now, Wally was quick, but early flamethrower spam wasn't going to be as easy a strategy as I hoped it would be for Watson. The issue was simple. Watson was packing a speedy crew. Every single Pokemon outsped me naturally, even the hunk of magnets. How this thing has a 70 base speed is beyond me, but more importantly, it's well beyond my speed boostless chickens 55. I was going to need to eat four attacks and route to a victory, and that's assuming flamethrower could one shot everything. Voltorb was what it was. It did its damage and moved on. Flamethrower cashed in. Electric howled because he is dumb. We just now needed some good fortune against the Magnet. Sonic Boom was the best we could ask for as our Orenberry hit to boost us to 41 HP. T-Wave put us in danger and was able to steal a turn from us immediately. After a Shockwave, we were now dead to anything next turn, but Flamethrower hit, and with Blaze Boost, Manectric didn't stand a single chance. Finally, our chicken can make some friends. Chad the Noom will join the team, as well as Tristan the Torkoal and Drewster the Mag Cargo. Falarber was beautiful, raining with ashes and completely unimportant otherwise. In Meaty Falls, we found Zuko and Sokka, duking it out with a scientist who was really just trying to play with some rocks. The mission was clear. Fire Guy is bad and must be stopped. At the top of Mount Chimney, we found him. Ozai. His Mighty Anna was tough, considering Bite is a special attack in this game and Tristan's bulk was super concentrated in physical defense, but Body Slam paralyzed Pogdog first turn and a curse allowed us to finish it in two. Camerupt was looking scary, but after a curse defense boost, the Camel opted to use Ember instead of Magnitude? Which makes no sense, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the Magnitude damage calc. I, I have no idea. Body Slam rolled another 30% paralysis, and Tristan outsped and clobbered the big boy. Chad with Flamethrower finished Zubat, and we were rolling to Flannery, and I had a planner. Planner. Ow. That's really bad. Oh, yes, it is. Numble Showdown. Chad versus Numel. Who will win? Somehow, Chad was slower than generic Numel on the other side and had to swallow a magnitude 5, even though it was like five levels higher. Still, generic Numel was no match for magnitude 6. And then I sent out Drewster to look her counterpart in the eye as well. Yawn was the perfect move to get stonked in for free here so we could set up a whole bunch of bulk ups before Slugma woke up and fired off Sunny Day again. I couldn't risk taking damage. I flamethrowered, one-shotting the slimy yucky guy and inviting in Camerupt. Lame erupt used... To These puns have to stop. Anyways, it, it died. With the final mod on the floor, Stonk used flamethrower to get a good chip and Torkoal used attract. Two turns of immobility had our chickens back against the wall. My options were super limited. Fire off a rock smash and hope it's enough? Bet on Blaze Flamethrower in the sun? Either way, 50% chance to not move anyways was devastating. I pivoted to Tristan, who was very quickly becoming our centerpiece, and ate another sun-boosted overheat. And then not one body slam, 
but two. And then we finished the Torkoal. Four freaking badges, boys. Norman was next, which was kind of fine. I figured we could navigate beating Vigoroth and Slaking with Tristan's physical mantra and the move Protect. It was all about beating Spinda and Lanoon. Reminder that our chicken doesn't have double kick because of a Roxanne error. Vigoroth came out second, which meant Tristan had to come out early. Then Lanoon walked in. Now, I'm not sure if, like, normally, Flamethrower would do half of Lanoon's HP here, but didn't matter. It was gonna belly drum, and I had to try. And, of course, our franchise player drilled a critical hit, burying Lanoon and inviting out Slaking, whose truant ability was no match for our single move Protect. The balance badge was ours. Now, fun little thing. Surprisingly, none of our fire types could learn the move Surf. This wasn't fire water type Slugma from Ancestral X. It was bad, pure fire, no stats, Drewster. Sorry, editor, man. We had two major fights before Winona, and the first was Shelly. Shelly was cheeks. Carvana would be scary if the little guy had a single water move, but nope. And now our fifth member of the team, YZ the cast form. Now remember, we have rules here. Cast form can only attack in sun form, and if not in sun form, it can only use sunny day or switch out. And that's it. Seriously, I'm not sure if this run is possible without this little guy, so at any rate, we immediately needed to add our new hero because May's fight takes place in the rain. Lombre and Marsh Tomp were going to cook us. Alright, no water moves on the water type Pokemon on May's team here in the rain. Yeah, I got time, guys. Super hot fire. I spit that. Oh! I tell you so. Oh! Get him up. Let him get up. Let him get up. Oh! I told you not to do that. We met Steven Stone next, who was hanging with a stealthy keck before parading our fire types through the rainforest to find ourselves our final encounter at Mount Pyre. Vulpix. Vulpix was going to be the fastest Pokemon on our squad, and outside of Stonked, it wasn't even close. Drink the Vulpix. Let's do this. We also added the Sunny Day TM to our loadout, which I hoped would come in handy later. Winona was on the clock, and I was set to make sure she kept flying sky high. Torkoal shredded Swablu with Flamethrower, but invited Pelipper out the second turn. I sent Cast Form in, who dodged the Supersonic on the walk-in en route to Thunderbolting the poor bird. Winona's ace took the floor. I was trembling and admittedly devastated when Ice Beam didn't crit nor kill. That Dragon Dance boosted Earthquake was gonna hurt. Oh, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> All right, 10 HP is way better than zero HP. The Citrus Berry brought us back and Cast Form was able to sweep the remaining Skarmory, Tropius, and Swablu with Weather Ball. This new level cap was huge. Welcome in Mag Cargo and Blaziken, and access to the Firestone now meant Ninetales was aboard. We were assembling the Avengers. Blaziken was like Iron Man, Torkoal like the Hulk, huh? and I, I don't I don't know any other Avengers. This is about the point in the game where Maxi and post pubescent Team Flare decide to awaken the God of Land and adjacently Lava. Groudon was huge, but like not that much bigger than the sprite of my ten year old self. I'll just think of my character as really really bulky i think maxi's team itself was no fun with the opening pog dog swaggering to make life a little bit more difficult for me i hit myself and then rock smash to do real damage i love being plus three attack and doing just over half of mighty Anna's hp with a stab fighting type move from blaziken sick crobat swapped in because maxi's scared which forced me into tristan i tried for the body slam paralysis to no avail Flamethrower ate this bat for lunch, though, and the ace Camerupt walked in. I had set up an iron defense, so our defense was really, really strong when Camerupt took the field. Torkoal is already defensive bulky, so think like Steven Adams, Marshawn Lynch, Tristan the Torkoal. Got it? Body Slam Paralysis was crucial here, as we now had the ability to pivot and attack first. Chad swapped in, and we lucked out. Full Paralysis. Earthquake from our camel rocked the evil camel, and all that was left was Mighty Enna. Of course, Chad didn't care at all. He was at full health, and like Biggie Smalls, he was spitting fire. Pog Dog just couldn't quite handle it. Secret underwater base time. It's not actually underwater at all, and it's very much just like just like outside of Lily Cove, and I'm not exactly sure what I meant there, but regardless, I always feel like this is the entrance to that lair in Spy Kids with the Sleepy Sharks. Maybe I'm just saying words. There's a boss fight, but it's just kind of like watered down Archie, like Ungato as opposed to Elgato. Got the capture card at Walmart. It doesn't work the same, but it's still worth a shot. 
It was time to take on Tate and Liza. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. This isn't gonna fucking work. I know. That's why I prepared. I made a beeline of the Safari Zone, home to one of life's most important technical machines, Solar Beam. Solar Beam is one of the Fire Nation's only counters to the Water Nation. It allows us to get off some serious damage against Pokemon that I'd normally be screwed against. There, there weren't any water types in this gym, but I had to say that bit because the whole Avatar reference. Now nah, these were gonna be these were gonna be rock and ground types, which honestly is my worst nightmare. Uh, but good thing I could teach Solar Beam to any Pokemon in my party of my choice, right? Wrong. Literally, not a single Pokemon can learn Solar Beam on my entire team, except for freaking Castform, who already boasts the best coverage in the game for us. And I know what you're thinking. Half of you right now are with me, thinking you know that every single one of these Pokemon can learn Solar Beam. So what gives? We've seen it on Nine Tails in Torkoal competitively. And then there's the other half of you who I envy because you are a bunch of geniuses and you know that every single Pokemon on this team received Solar Beam as an addition to their moveset in Generation 4. None of these Pokemon could learn anything. Awesome. That's so weird. I took on every trainer in the gym as a single battle and darted back to Lily Cove to get access to the department store TMs, protect, light screen, and reflect were all just beyond a May battle. I do wish that this game gave you the opportunity to see May battle with her final evolution of her starter at some point, but unfortunately, this is the last time you play against her in the story, and it's a marsh top. TMs, yay! It was now time to square off against Moss and Brady, Crosby and Latang, the Jet and the Vitsky, Tate and Liza. There was no way this was gonna go well. Zatu was chugging calm mines like strength pots, and Claydol was blasting earthquakes that never touched his teammates. I burned Claydol with a Will-O-Wisp and fired off a Sunny Day just in time to take double damage from a rat named Claydol. Confused Ray on Zatu punished the dumb bird immediately, resulting in a self-fit and allowing me to get off some more damage on that Claydol with Weather Ball. Still, I was cornered. I knew the heal was inbound for Claydol, but Zatu could kill either one of us. I fire blasted Zatu, Weather Balled Claydol, and prayed. And we got another self-hit. Betting on a second heal, I blasted it again and Weather Balled Claydol one down lunatone coming out was ideal though i was a little nervous about what psychic might do to yz the cast form drink finished zatu and i switched drewster in to eat a psychic tate and liza had two mons left and they were both open to slurping some fiery hits Solrock used sunny day which was weird but i took it lunatone calm minded which was scary and a yawn from drewster and a pivot had us in an okay position my next move was to protect on the slug, and both monsters attacked it. This paved a clear path for Tristan to deliver a fire blast, which did like nothing. Whatever, Yawn was set to put Solrock to sleep the next turn. The only issue was that Solrock attacked Tristan instead of Drewster, and fire blast from Tristan missed. Luck was running out, and that turn was evident. I swapped camera up in, desperate to eat at least one more attack before conceding defeat. Psychic hurt, but put Chad in a perfect position to heal enough to eat one more attack with its Citrus Berry. And then, it happened. Body Slam from Tristan landed the much-needed Paralysis. We got a full Para immediately, and spent the next turn double targeting the Moon to finish the job. It was a 2v1. Somehow, someway, we were overpowering Tate and Liza without ever taking a death. Solrock was much less special defense bulky than its counterpart, and after just one more turn of flamethrower and body slam, Solrock fell, and the battle was ours. Seven whole badges. That was by far our toughest test yet. I, I, we're, we're not we're not we're not talking about Roxanne because Rox, it was like it was just Ember. We just clicked Ember, and then it, and then we just hoped, and it, it, we're not counting Roxanne. The next big fight was the Magma Tag double battle with Steven, with two camera ups on the opposing side. I was definitely nervous about what these ground moves might do to our team. Opening with a swagger boosted self hit on Tristan wasn't exactly ideal. Still, Tristan had proven time and time again that he was ready to ball. My plan wasn't ever to have both camera ups staring me down, but I almost wondered if being next to each other would incentivize them not to hit each other. Like, does the AI see that its teammate is dead to Earthquake and think, mm, maybe not? Like, I'm not sure, but I didn't, I didn't really want to find out, but I like had to. I clobbered Maxi's camera up as soon as I could with Body Slam and Pogdog was back out on the field. It actually wasn't until Crobat had come out and already taken half of its health and damage that I even had to switch out our first Mon Tristan. Finally, I sent in YZ to set up Sunny Day and start Solar Beaming. Metal Claw from a tank smacked Pogdog and Weather Ball finished the goal bat. Steven, do you mind teaching us how to swim underwater? 
That's right, boys. We were taking our Firestorm to the deep, dark depths of underwater Hoenn. This is definitely an underexplored and underappreciated part of the games. I think the series should consider an underwater region. 94% of life on Earth is underwater. Imagine the Pokemon under there. It would be entirely water types, which I, I guess would be a little bland. But, like, just, like, put some reefs and volcanoes and shit in there. Uh, anyways, back to trying to stop Team Mystic from awakening the god of the seas. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Archie. Please don't do... do, do uh, okay, we could... All right, we're fighting. Uh, okay. That was my uh, flamethrower imitation there. Uh, Drink blasted the Crobat with Fire Blast and invited in the final Mon, Sharkpedo. And I know what you're thinking. Same thing I was. Oh, no. This guy's going to use water moves and beat me up. Nope. Doesn't have any. Literally not one. Sharkpedo's special attack is actually like pretty high. So a move like Surf might have devastated my whole roster. But not in this game. Flame Body was devastating for Shark Boy. Imagine having your entire career's purpose trivialized by a 10-year-old and his pet slug. What makes no sense is that I beat Archie up and then he's like, yeah, I think I'm just going to wake up the God of the Seas anyways. Like, didn't I just kick your butt so you wouldn't do that? And if I was too late, why would we talk about it? Whatever. I made my way to Sutopolis where Wallace was waiting in a cave for some Jimmy Neutron ass 10 year old to give him the world saving advice that he needed. Yes, Wallace, Rayquaza's at Sky Pillar. I vacation there all the time. We rode the roller coasters I engineered to take us into space over to Sky Pillar and had a brief chat with everyone's favorite lizard. And then he left me at the top. So I had to walk all the way back down all alone. What? So I had to walk all the way back down all alone. So I had to walk all the way back down all alone. So I had to walk all the way back down all alone. In Sutopolis, the story of the game resolved, and it was time to take on the final gym leader, Juan. Juan was going to be a crazy challenge for us, purely based on two facts. One, this is a water type gym. We are fire types. Two, this was gym number eight, quite literally designed to be the hardest in the game. So what did we do? Well, we blitzed him with beams. Why is he set up sunny day and dodge the sweet kiss first turn? Solar beam proceeded to blast love disc into the next dimension. One water boy down. Celio came out second and managed to tank a solar beam with just one HP left. We used the beam again and caught Juan sleeping when he healed the chunky boy. Ride to smithereens from top to bottom. Whiskash did not deserve what came next, but that's not my fault. Crawdon came out at a bad time. The sun faded and YZ resorted to his base form. Fortunately, because we were faster, we were able to fire off Sunny Day once more and further devastate Juan with yet another solar beam. Top of the world, Kingdra was staring us down. I wanted to try for a paralysis, so I thunderbolted over solar beaming. I got a crit, which was cool, and the second one put it near death's door, but the problem was Kingdra was insistent on setting up double teams, so we were two double teams in, and Kingdra rested back to full health. Why is he ate an ice beam in its standard form before setting up sun once more and then switching into drink on water pulse? Water pulse confused us. I was terrified. I now needed to fire off hits, and drink responded by hurting itself in confusion twice in a row. And then it happened. We snapped out and landed the most potent attack in the game, Attract. That's right. If Juan was going to try and drown us out with evasion strats, I was going to be just as toxic. I started setting up double teams too. So now even if Kingdra managed to roll the 50% attack chance each turn, it only had a 33% chance to land that. In other words, our Fox was invincible. Oh, 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 water pulse. Please stop. I stopped. Ow. I then decided we needed confusion in this as well. Burned, confused blind and in love this kingdra really got trolled this was maybe the least satisfying victory i'd ever experienced but i have no idea what else i was to do rng jesus had my back this day and kingdra burned out eight whole badges it wasn't pretty and i wasn't proud alas i was alive and that's what mattered to the elite four we ventured wally and victory road wasn't that bad sunny day ice beam is the new meta from yz here altaria fell it was actually kind of a sweep Delcaddy wanted nothing to do with Weather Ball, neither did Magneton or Roselia. Guard of Wire came in when Sun went down, which was awkward enough for me to consider switching out, but I sunny dayed once more as Guard of War future sighted, and Weather Ball did just so much damage. But I was convinced Double Team had nothing on me here, even though Future Sight hurt. Just just a little bit. I had to navigate two full restores here too, which had me sweating, but Weather Ball just never missed, and eventually overwhelmed the elegant psychic type. And we were here. We made it to the Elite Four. One more time, who did we make it with? Well, everyone's third favorite web browser, Drink the Firefox. This guy was speedy and special bulky with some fun utility. 
YZ the cast form was here, never failing to make my day brighter and hardly qualifying as a fire type at all, but still super cool and durable. We had Tristan the Torkoal, a bulky stalwart that has anchored this run since we met just before Flannery. Stock the Blaziken, our starter, kinda ass, but we were able to reteach it double kick since we got access to the super rod. Bulk up double kick strategies are about to go insane in the Elite Four. Chad the camera up, slow and bad at fighting. I really had no hope for getting quality use out of this guy in the Elite Four. And finally, Drewster the Mad Cargo. Flame Body might be helpful, but asking it to use moves will not be. This was it, the squad. The too much water region was just conquered with only fire types. We just had to finish the job. Sydney was first. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Yeah, I mean, a nine level difference between the mods in this fight and the mods on Drake's team will do that. This team also suffers from the physical special split not having occurred yet. Mighty Anna and Absol would have been strong Pokemon if their moves were physical. Alas, a sunny day boosted weather ball from YZ was just too much for the first three Pokemon. Finally, Shiftry walked out, a chlorophyll Pokemon that absolutely would have benefited from the sun just one turn ago as it just went out. I set it up anyways for our boy because Shiftry deserved at least one W before YZ gave it the business. It actually managed to confuse us and dodge a weather ball, paving way for extrasensory to hurt our feelings a little bit. Still confused, we cleared Shiftry before Cacturn took the stage. With its life on the line, facing weather ball in the sun, Cacturn took the obvious and only route, Leech Seed. Yeah, okay, buddy. Thanks for the free pass, you lost to an undefined ball of weather by itself. I was hoping Phoebe would be at least a little bit of a challenge, as our boys definitely needed to get some good experience in before tackling the final boss, Wallace. The best battle in this run being a water type trainer definitely had some like magical story vibes that I really enjoyed. And my hopes were honored against Phoebe. The very first Pokemon actually ate a weather ball. It was groundbreaking and a little devastating. The second Dusclops then stepped in and I knew it had earthquake, but I also know that Dusclops has no attack stat. Like it's actually wretched. So I tanked one, did some serious damage and then sent it another Pokemon to finish the job. Fire Blast from Stonked. A second Pokemon was finally getting Elite Four experience. And a Fire Blast was just too much for the ensuing Banette altogether, bringing it from 100% HP all the way down to 0 HP. I used that exact same complicated strategy to take down the second one as well. Only Sableye remained. It's dead. I killed it with Fire Blast. It's super dead. Like, like charred in the dirt, dead. Well, Glacia is going to be really hard. I can just feel it. I mean, she has water types. Three of them. Sure, she's an ice leader, but Thick Fat is on the walruses. I set up three bulk ups with Stonked, betting the whole farm on not getting paralyzed. I did get static once, but my cherry berry saved me. And with my safety net out of the way, I decided it was probably optimal to not let it body slam me another time. So I cleared it, and then the big boss walked in. Wall rain. I know I'd set up bulk ups, but my best fighting move was 60 base power. And what if it didn't kill? I used double kick, and it crit. First shot, one shot. Literally no sweat at all. Actually, I didn't get any more crits, but I didn't have to hit any of these Pokemon with double kick twice. All of my whining just to find out that this attack was actually all that I... It was more than what I needed. I just needed a 30 base power fighting move, I guess. Maybe I've just been spoiled. Drake was up, and I was terrified of what might happen next. I had an Ice Beamer, but for the first time the whole run, it was outsped seriously by the threat staring me down. These dragons were about to tear me apart. I set up Sunny Day because that's the rules and immediately ate a Rock Tomb from Drake's opener. Ice Beam shredded the shitty Shellgon after two Protects stalled out my Sunny Day turns, and Flygon took the stage. I mean, what was I supposed to do? It was gonna Earthquake, and whatever I sent in was gonna die. So I guess the question is, who don't I need for Wallace? I scanned my loadout, the friends I'd made throughout the run. Everyone had played their part, but there was one Pokemon specifically that I knew had to go. Chad, it was a pleasure, buddy. You knocked out Maxi's camera up once, and I can never repay you for that. 07, boss. This allowed Ninetales to get in for free, and I went for my Hail Mary. Attract. I got Infatuation the first turn, and will wisp half the damage the dragon can do from here on out. I set up some double teams, hoping to do to this Flygon what I did to Juan's Kingdra. Unfortunately, Flygon landed an Earthquake, putting us at just over half HP, which was a little unnerving. We were definitely dead to a high roll here, but I had to risk it, and Flygon could never make contact. We defeated the beast. With Salamence on the floor and our double teams up, it didn't make sense for me to switch out. I attracted again, and then Rock Slide, even though it hit through tracks, didn't hit through double team, and then we missed Will-O-Wisp. Not once, not twice, but three times in a row? 
RNG Strikes Back is a game that we actually played a while ago and you should check it out. But this was hurting me a lot. Still, Mens hadn't done anything to us either. And eventually we did hit. And after that, and a whole bunch of turns, we did it. We RNG'd two consecutive Pokemon this deep into the Elite Four. The same situation would play out with the ensuing Kingdra before Altaria finally landed an attack. Aerial Ace. My double teams were worthless here. Attract still worked, but my attack dodging RNG was significantly trivialized. Good news? Will-O-Wisp, while it drains HP residually, still has its secondary effect. Having the attack of whoever is burned, and Aerial Ace was a physical attack. Altaria couldn't do anything to us and burnt to a crisp in the limelight. The most fraudulent fight in the history of my Nuzlocke and career was over. All that was left was Wallace, who we stood actually no chance against. I rocked with the track strats one more time against the opening whale, and it, we got one the first turn, but not the second. Still, I've been able to set up Sunny Day with Drink that second turn, so we survived before I got to set up another double team. Then Wailord and I traded blows. Rainy Dance for Sunny Day back and forth trying to declare a winner i just needed to buy turns so toxic could drain the damage output from Wailord's water spouts those things could be vicious and drown my entire team i toxic again on wallace's full restore setting Wailord up for a sticky and icky demise and then ludicolo stepped in this guy gives me nightmares i've had battles with wallace where this guy sets up an infinite amount of double teams and gets four whole full restores burned on it i'm convinced this is wallace's favorite pokemon Still, toxic and infatuated, we chipped the mighty lily pad over and over. Every single attack was dodged, and Tentacruel was out next. After Wallace, for the first time ever, ignored his main man. Drink wouldn't see the same luck against Tentacruel, dodging a few but not unlimited hydro pumps. Also, we couldn't toxic this one, so one pump landed and sunk our relatively speedy web browser into the depths, but cashing in on two of Wallace's beasts would not be in vain if we could still pull this out. Tristan stepped in to give Tenna the business, body slamming the creature a couple times until the eventual paralysis hit. Drink had set up Tristan to not have to deal with hydro pumps, but the Tenacruel did get off a toxic to weaken everyone's favorite turtle, before I swapped into Stonk to finish the job. And Stonk's role here was clear, bulk up until Earthquake could do enough damage to rock Wallace's whole team. Stuck on Sludge Bomb and Ice Beam, Tenna couldn't do anything, as Stalked boosted and dammed all of Tenacruel, Whiskash, and even the mighty Milo back to back to back. Stalked chipped Gyarados as well before succumbing to Surf. I sacrificed Drewster because I could, and I sent in YZ the cast form to get up Sun. YZ fell, and with Gyarados' Surf weakened, I sent in our final Mond, the toxic and trying turtle, Tristan. Tristan had done so much work! throttling Flannery, holding down the fort during Norman. We wouldn't be here without him. And now, it all came down to this. Giardos fired off a greedy dragon dance, spelling extra trouble for the looming earthquakes that had just claimed some of our best friends. Body slam. Paralysis. There was a chance. A 25% full paralysis could give us the victory, but would Fire Blast even kill from here? Shout out to our Patreon subscribers for helping me make all this happen. John, Reed, and Chad are VIP Plus members. You guys are the goats. Like and subscribe to the channel. It would mean a whole lot. Thanks for watching the video, team.